Okay, so here is uh, what I opened up this morning, and I did a little bit of slight YouTube searching, looking for my favorite greatest hits of stuff, but actually I was looking for this video where a guy was ranting, and of course when you type in the word trading and stuff, you come up with something, and all of a sudden I'm triggered. Uh, and I'm like, oh boy, here we go, because uh, the UK's spread betting site... Um, this there's this guy he's interviewed and he's a big he's a tr successful trader and stuff Andre Manassen dude stop you're hurting me brain you're harshing my fucking melon to death here you bitch so I put him on and I thought I like to wake up angry well I like to wake up and then I get the fucking so I asked someone get this guy Dalton asked me so what's your secret for trading <laughs> Anger. Um, why does anybody... So what's the motivation? Why is anybody fucking trying to trade these markets and make money? And the, and um, you, it's... it's um, problem is we're using money to make money. So this is the whole fucking problem. So money is connected to your hypothalamus or something. It's connected to the core of your reptilian brain. Money. And... So I was talking to a, uh, a business friend last night, and we were talking about money, and he was ready to sell his business and just get out because everything, there's so much regulation, and he was just like, man, I got to get new software. They're making me get new software, he said, and I got to learn that, plus I got to do this, plus I got to do this. So the overwhelm, and a lot of people shut down. I'm easily overwhelmed, and so I can only trade one or two currencies at a time because I cannot take in the whole gestalt of a fucking currency chart. And when you look at a chart, it's fucking overwhelming. Like, if you know that if you're a day trader and you look at a one year of data, you're like, you're thinking to yourself, holy shit, look at this day just alone, this one fucking day where it went down 300 fucking pips. And you're like, wow. Now, if anybody's ever made or lost money on that, now actually you would make more money than you lose because even if you're using your account as a stop, and I've done this trade, you got a hundred bucks in the account, now you got five hundred bucks in one day. You're like, fuck. Beautiful. I knew it was gonna move like that. And uh, even if you didn't know it was gonna move like that, but you had the right sizing. And they never blew your account up. I mean, I've driven counts. I used to trade without stops for the first two years of trading or two first year because my day job paid more than trading. So what does it matter whether you make now some guy just asked me on YouTube comments last video. And this is I'm trying not to I'm trying to. Uh, so I read the comment and of course, it's a very small comment. It includes everything. He says, hi, do you have an FX book account? So we, now, I in one sentence, I'm just going to tear this sentence apart. Um, I'm very <laughs> meticulous and critical, so let me just comment here. I'll just read the whole thing, and then I'll go back and, and tear it apart. But, hi, do you have an FX book? Uh, book account so we can see the results of your trading. And he has a smiley face. So this is a friendly comment. Um, but I like the idea that it's we. Uh, instead of, can I see it? Like, drop your tr trousers. Can I see it? I've heard about it. Oh, you know, I'm the president of the United States. Um, hey, listen, I may have small fingers, but you should see my fucking FX account. Now, I get the fact that this is the aim of uh, the most people in the market. But, like I spent uh, five hours talking to my buddy last night, and he has, you know, plenty of money. <laughs> I said, well, you know, but does he like his job? So whether you're, if you're making, um, I kind of like... Uh, the question would be, do you like trading <laughs> or are you masochist? I told my buddy last night, 
maybe you're just a masochist. He was telling me all his problems with the, the building falling apart and his employees are out of their fucking mind. And I, I so, well, you know, hey, do you like the drama? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that he would miss it. I kept telling him if he quit and he, so he was, uh, wanted to just bail on the whole rig and he's getting old and he's, he's, he got a little bit of cancer. Now he's thinking, I got to fucking wrap this shit up. Now, for the people that are 30 years old, they're like looking at this guy Dalton, looking at, oh, I want to make fucking $50 an hour or $50 a day. Of course you can do that. But of course, at that point, you're going to have to, instead of having time, you're going to need money. So time, the old jokes, I'm not joke, but the saying is time's money. Yeah, because it's going to take you. So if you go and you make like, um, in other words, if you can't turn $50 into $100, you're never going to turn $1,000 into $2,000. So why aren't you trading with a $100 1K account? Because once you go in there, your brain doesn't understand leverage. And you see that you're only using $10 of real money and you're controlling a, a money that you don't have. And the market only has to move a, okay, it only has to move a C here to, um, make you $20 or lose $20. Uh, but if you do the math and not everybody that comes to the market wants math because some people are attracted by the Gartley patterns, to be honest with you, if you've never traded and you're going through the YouTube videos, you're like, what the fuck is that? Is that a bikini top or is that, are that, is that a bat wing? And that's my trigger point is if you're wearing a bikini top, even if you're a dude, I'm like, wow, look, Maybe dudes should wear that. I mean, I've seen a couple. I just saw <laughs> someone kind of commenting about uh, Steve Miller jamming on stage. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're into that. Um, <clears throat> but getting back to the anger issue the, that uh, is the driving force. I mean, not anger, but the motivation to correct things that you think are incorrect. So what, why is anybody uh, motivated to do anything? So, But the guy here asking me the, the question about the... Uh, so the results, now here's the problem. Uh, why? My, I don't want, I didn't want to, I, I just told him, hey, you know, I've done it, but you know, what's, that's not the question. My question back to his, which I don't want to be mean like I normally am with people, but I want to be honest, Co. if I'm honest and I say that you're, that you have the worst um, looking body, um, and it's just not attractive, that's not so bad. Maybe you've got another redeeming quality, like you're very funny in bed. You can crack great jokes um, while we're having sex. And sex is just to make babies anyways. Um, so he's saying, uh, the, why, would you, why would he want to see the results of my trading? Now, if my results are bad... <laughs> Does that mean does that mean what I'm saying is not true? No, because right? I mean, they're disconnected from each other. Trading isn't uh, plus now if he says now if my results are good, you know he's going to say this would be the Calvinist when I say Calvinist, I mean Calvin Klein that attacked me for um uh, how is trading oh that I was making money and that that was a demo, let me see your real money. This this argument again. This is ridiculous. Um, so, because I could give you the most, I could actually do a, uh, and I do it live, do it live. I do it live, and I did the, I, here I'm pressing this button, and I'm describing, describing every fucking trade I'm doing, which I, it's mind blowing that people kind of miss, oh, it looks like you blew up the account. I just told you I was doing that. I'm telling you, I'm hitting buttons in a demo fucking account. Now, if my demo account is making a bunch of money, then the guy's going to go, holy shit, do you have a mentorship? Do you have the... It's like, wow, well, you know, I. you don't see this in the music. I always go back to music because nobody goes to play guitar thinking they're going to make a million dollars. Maybe they're going to think of a million women. You know, uh, the, what is the motivation for anybody to trade these fucking markets? Let's see some results, bitch. How many, like, nobody asks, uh, it's like, how big, how much horsepower does the motor have? 
it doesn't mean you're going to win the fucking race. How much horsepower does it have? How much leverage you have? It doesn't matter, mean you're going to win any race. You could drive it fucking... You're, these guys that drive these race cars, holy shit. Just to mentally be able to drive that fast. Anybody that... If you were a passenger in a... In a um, one of these guys, uh, one of the guys that fly the jet planes over your head and occasionally blow them up, uh, and these fucking even a NASCAR car, you get in there, holy shit, you, you just you're gonna lose your brain because nobody goes that fast. Just like if you're trading super big, it would be the same thing if you were trading forty standard lots one day. You'd have to build yourself up to that. If you're only making a hundred grand a year in your day job, or maybe you're making two hundred grand a year in your day job, how can you fucking psychologically manage? A $40,000 fluctuation on the close of the... Did anybody see the British pound? What the fuck happened to the British pound? I mean, dude... Okay, let me, let me just go to the chart for a second. I don't want to get lost in the charts, but did anybody see what happened to this fucking British pound? Did anybody make money from that? Could you have made money from it? That's a 50-pip horizontal line. Those are 10-pip handles. Are you fucking kidding me? You know how quick? That's a 15-minute chart. I mean, granted, you got an hour to get in the fucking out of this thing. I wanted to delete this indicator. So I just listened to this ICT guy. He did his webinar. What a goof. Fibonacci? <laughs> he's still talking about Fibonacci, and he's got this clan of people... Now, I know that he's probably got the newbies all, all giddy about Fibonacci. <laughs> giddy about Fibonacci. But it's really fucking ridiculous, people. St same thing with RSI. If you don't understand what's going on with RSI, don't even fucking touch it. It's, it's momentum index. It's just math. What this is, and, and I'm going to go to this fucking guy that triggered me this morning, this fucking spread betting goof. Spread betting UK. What the fuck? Are they going to mentor me? Are they going to show me how to fucking blow up my account? I, I, I get so pissed off when I see that shit. It's like some fucking commercial on TV. If you get this, you're going to get laid. No, you're not. You're just going to get this. Fucked. So, is there a trade plan for this fucking market? Yes. I can see so much fucking money right here. If you're willing to press the button every 15 minutes. Every 15 fucking minutes, you're, there's a trade here. Now, look at the dynamics. I can see a 10-pip winner here. So once you can see where the fuck Waldo is, the story is complete here. It's pure fucking auction. And there's auctions within the auction. How the fuck can people miss this? Because I'm going to go into that in a second. How can people fucking mix, m miss this shit? Look at this fucking, it's a classic fucking story. Every fucking day I watch this guy. I told, I told people about this guy, Chris Handley. The only other live broadcaster. Bless his heart. He's taking trades. He's not risking any money, but he can't see this stuff after seven years. I'm kind of mind boggled that after fucking seven years, like I've been stopped out. Like I said, I've been stopped out of trades. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe I should have got in there. Fuck yeah, I actually got back in because I'm an anger trader. I'm like, fuck you, you're not stop me out, bitch. I know where this fucking market's going. Fuck you. So anger trading works. It works if you work it. I wrote the scripts around my anger. Oh yeah, I fucking traded this fucker. Well, I was trading the euro versus the pound. Because it doesn't move quite as harshly as this fucker. But... So listen to ICT talk about Fibonacci. Just it cracks me the fuck up. And he's claiming, oh, I know all this shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, people, you got to. I, I, his audience, granted, you know, I'm trying to uh, uh, I'm trying to connect with people on every level. Because the beginner people have to realize that all this shit they hear is fucking bullshit. It's all, I mean, not all of it. But when you hear somebody talking out of fear, you're like, dude, you are not, you haven't, uh, like, I went to my first wife I had. She's out of her fucking mind, right? So what do I do? 
the conventional wisdom is go to marriage counseling. Well, guess what? The marriage counselor weighs like five bills, 500 pounds. Uh, five quib, right? Whatever. You're going to help me? Look at you. That's why this guy's asking me, well, where's your results? Okay, but it's not like that in trading. Because what if I show you a fake me, a fake account? What if the 500-pound psychologist is going to try to fix my marriage? Talks to me on Skype. I'm sure this is happening. Talks to me on Skype. I can only see his face. I'm not going to judge him. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. So you always say, what is the motivation for semi? Let me see your results. Let me see the size of your dick. Does that mean I'm getting laid? <laughs> right? People, and some women are like, dude, you just broke my pelvis. Give me a fucking Chinaman. Um, so it's got to be a good fit. And does it fit your lifestyle? This guy last night, I wanted to, I wanted so bad to go, have you tried trading Forex? Like he doesn't like the business he's in. But see, the thing is, as soon as I say the word Forex, people just like, okay, you just lost me. Goodbye. So there's just a pile of money here <laughs> on this chart alone. Can you stay up for 24 hours and trade this? Probably not. <laughs> could you have made money in Asia? You could have made 10. You, like I said, you could make 10, 20 pips in Asia on high probability trades. And there was a guy in the um, live stream, motorcycle guy. So he'd been drinking Drambuie. And he was getting kind of angry with this guy that came in the chat room. So this is what happens. So it was so funny because finally the live stream, we got some uh, drama in there. And I woke up and saw, you know, people are, having a shoot out there like hey you know oh really i can pump fucking 500 pounds let me see you do something bitch and the, and the one guy motorcycle used this this classic term which is high probability trade this is another fucking thing that i just want to blow my brains out it has nothing to do if if you're in the wrong size on a high probability trade and what is it 80 percent probability and you're in too big goodbye there was a better trade you should have taken, or there was a better way to get in. So it's how you get in the fucking market, not if you get in the market. And the guy, Chris Hanley, first thing I ask most traders, how do you get in? At the market. <sighs> like, because I just can't see the chart. I didn't even notice it. I just got a gut feeling. Now, you can, you can make money on that. You can totally make money on a gut feeling. And you will ride that fucker out. Like, you have a gut feeling about some girl that you married that's hot and you made babies and that you're living in, you know, random paradise. It's just like the market's random paradise. The market's going your way. Holy shit. My wife loves me again. Holy shit, flowers do work. Then, bam. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. What the fuck's the matter with you? Well, I'm a guy, you know. I'm just... I mean, honey, if you're not wearing good clothes, I'm not going to pay attention to you. Or if you're not, if you're not, nobody wants to admit to this, but we filter everything we see. <laughs> let me just, let me just run through this chart in kind of a crude, uh, pip orientated, stop loss orientated world. So I'm listening to the fucking, um, <laughs> you know, it's so hard to be objective and have something that fits every little thing just perfectly. Now, if you had stops that were five pips to make eight pips, yes, I traded that. Now, according to ICT, you never, never trade with a five pip stop, three pip stop. No, not on standard lots like he's doing. So he's a swing trader. He's talking to swing traders, but he's not talking to money makers. He doesn't, he doesn't talk about making money. Talks about picking the right direction. You got your Fibonacci pullback. This is all a conventional wisdom bullshit. He's importing conventional wisdom bullshit into a market that looks like this. Anybody running a 20 EMA on this making money? Well, you see, it's in a kind of a downtrend, but I had a 30 pip stop in this thing and they took me out. Oh, really? Yeah, the guy at the, yeah. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ, man. And it, my trend line, holy shit, went right through it. But look at the respect for the 50-yard line. Look at the respect for pippage. Look at this thing come down. And I don't know, this is the bid only, so I don't know what the spread was. I didn't watch this because I was in another trade. I was in. Look at this. Look at this thing. At the 50. At the 50. I'm close on the 15. To the 50. To the 50. What the fuck? Oh, buy, sell, buy, sell. With buttons. You press a fucking button, man. Come on, people. I'm talking to my buddy. He said to me, I'm out of business. I said, well, yeah, out of business. He goes, cell phones put me out of business. The robots, yeah. Everything is shifting hard. Just like this market, hard shift. Do you have a trade plan for this shit? Do you have your hand on the trigger? Now, this guy, uh, Chris Hanley, he might have sold here and go, you know what? Looks like a downtrend day. Sell here, get out here, previous top. Okay. Trade's over. But there's some guy, and it's me, and I'm I'm trading this shit. Buy, 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 buy. Okay, I'm in a 25K. It's scaling out. Dump, dump, dump. Go sideways. Buy, buy, buy. I'm trapped. I got sell stops running underneath. Pick it up, going the other way. Now here's where you have to prepare for a 70 pip win in one hour. If you don't have the patience, and when this comes slamming to here, I'll tell you a lot of people are getting the fuck out. They're like, Jesus, I just made fucking. Now if your button that you're pressing has stops that are like this, and your worst stop is 15 pips. I don't know why this guy, see the thing, ICT is, he should just tell people, dude, I'm a position trader, I'm a swing trader. Do you like being underwater? Do you like fucking holding on to immense mental risk? See, it's the money weight on your shoulders. Here you just made 500 bucks in a flash crash. If you're holding till here, here you're only up a hundred bucks. You're up five hundred. Now you're only up a hundred. I mean, you can can you see your equity here now? You put the goober fucking. Hey, it's going sideways. There's a trade plan for the sideways shit. Now, granted, they trapped you here, but what if these tickets got filled? Now, there's so many trades in here. There's a million fucking approaches. Not to mention the guy that's asked me for results. <clears throat> so if I show my real money results, and he says that's. There's only um, eight thousand dollars in that account. How come you're not? How come you don't have a million dollars? Well, <clears throat> don't forget I took money out to live off of. Plus, do I really want to expose my account to that much slippage or whatever have you? Or what if the broker goes out of business? Let's not forget. The only thing certain in life is death and taxes. What is the? And <laughs> besides, he can't do what I'm doing. A lot of these people have day jobs. They're like, well, okay, If unless you're a day trader. This is why I don't understand why this Chris Hanley's not. He's under-trading the market. I just don't. He's on a, he's on a five-minute chart under-trading the market. But he's not trying to make money. I mean, he's not trying to risk. He says he doesn't want to risk money. Are you risking money? Um, now, he's trading very big on each ticket. That's another problem. Plus, he's trading first in, first out bullshit. So he can't trade. He can, can't trade like this. But he could actually. Like I did it. I made six thousand dollars at Oanda. I used more margin than Jesus. I mean, fifty-one leverage, right? But I don't understand the um, why people don't talk about how volatility. <laughs> why are people talking about volatility? Oh, I want a lot of volatility. Yeah. I get, I get it. If you're gonna build a position with a 20 pip stop and you're underwater by 35, by thirteen hundred dollars, does anybody want to be down thirteen hundred dollars on a trade? So this is the threshold for pain. How much is risk? Do you think it's, if you lost twenty dollars, would you think that's high or low risk? It depends. Now, if you take this number up, and this would be the test for anybody, if I had a prop house. Or anybody has one, 
You have to find people's psychological breaking point money-wise. You just lost $2,000 on that trade? Okay, does that bother you? Well, can you go back into the market now? Are you psychologically damaged? Oh, yeah. You've just been beat to shit by a girl that you thought, in other words, she killed you. You woke up dead. Holy shit, I thought she was just a normal girl. I think she's crazy. Didn't you? No, no, I didn't notice. I just thought she looked good. And so, anyways, it's complicated, right? Trading is tapped right into your brain. And if you're running a trailing sell stop, can you just see how perfect this trade is? Stacking up the deck. So that's what I did, but I was long the euro. Um, here's a stop hunt. Look at the ratio. You're risking this much to make this much in 15 fucking minutes. And who couldn't see this coming? Is this, is this not a triangle? A triangle is evaporation of volatility. Why are people talking about volatility? And so ICT doesn't trade breakouts. No, but he'll buy a pullback here at the 618, and he says, well, if it goes to 718, oh, I'm still in the trade, and this is my favorite thing I hear. He says... In his latest webinar, of course, I can't talk. I can't talk over his video because he sued me on Facebook. I mean, on Facebook, he he came after. He sent the YouTube police after me. He's such a pussy. So, um, he says, "Oh, stop loss." He says, "You know, twenty pips stop. That's realistic." And he's going to add to. No, he said to himself, in the video, he says. I have that stop in there, but if I see them coming, now this is hilarious. If I see them coming after my stop, I get out before they stop me out. Well, then why don't you use a 10-pip stop, douchebag? This is what I don't understand. What the fuck is this? What This guy's going to mentor me? And he can't trade? He weighs 500 pounds and he's my weight loss coach? What the fuck? Now, it doesn't mean he's not making money being a weight loss coach. It's money, money. Show me results. So we go in this circle. So let me go to the uh, video that triggered me <clears throat> that started the whole cascading of anger. We have to go back to the source. I remember I was at this, my wife, when I knew I had to get rid of my second wife was because she wanted to go to this retreat. And some people were talking about the source and they kept saying the source. And they were looking, you know, these mystic fucking magical things. I said, honey, this is the uh, what the bleep bullshit. What the bleep? Yeah, you look at all my thoughts are connected to my my penis. Yeah, I know your thoughts are connected to your penis. Who fucking knew, right? And they kept saying the source. I'm like, can you define that a little more? No, it can't. It's just the source, man. Oh, okay. And it was like the kind of like the. Um, I guess that's what it's about. It like a Ron L. Hubbard ICT. So here's the thing. It comes down to this stop loss shit. And so here's the classic trigger point for me. Listen to this um, guy talk about stop loss. And this is why ICT is like, 10 pip stops are ridiculous, 2 pip stop. It's not ridiculous. Who are you? And then he's got the sniper series. That's so fucking cute. He's like, hey, I got my sniper thing. You got. I thought, oh, man, am I going to need a scope? I'm going to need a scope for that. G Gerald, you got a scope? Is utilizing stop loss orders a good idea for your regular trader? So I am going to be a huge contrarian to everybody else who says, be careful, be careful, be careful, have tight stop losses, tight stop, the tight stop losses. I am certain is the main reason why most traders don't make money. Because before a trade moves your way, it usually moves the opposite way because the people in the market don't want, they have to make money from you and they know that this is complete bullshit. Right here, I'm triggered. Why does he say this shit? The people in the market don't want you to make money. This is the whole problem with this approach to a problem. Listen to how full of shit this guy is. They're going to close you out because most of you have tight stop losses, so you never get to make money. They're going to close you out. Dude, you closed yourself out because you didn't pick the right entry price. 
how does this have anything to do with the price of cheese? The price of cheese in in the dildo shop. It doesn't. What in the fuck? Every fucking moment this guy speaks, I think this is your fucking Marxist fucking logic in the markets. A, a men- is this guy a mentor? Dude, hit the gym. Come on. I'd say if you're confident about a trade, don't have tight stop losses. Have a big. If you're confident about a trade. Don't have so what the fuck is he talking about? If you're confident about the trade, what does it matter how tight your stop is? Now I know nobody likes to get stopped out because of fear of missing out. This guy has a fear of missing out. Listen to this guy talk. He's a mess. He needs a fucking mentor. Big, big gap between your stop losses. So if it goes down and it backs up to where you want, you're still in the trade, and you're not taken out. It, it backs up to where you want. Dude, you should have got in there. It means you fucked up your entry, you dumb shit. I, I can't take this fuck. And this guy is like got the fucking, you know, the eight, $10,000 camera, the fucking professional lighting, and this cunt fuck's going to tell me the, the, the price of tea in China? Fuck this fuck. I would say stop losses are, I would say is the main reason why most traders don't make money. Even <laughs> Not that they picked the wrong entry, the wrong exit. What the fuck is this guy doing? When they get it right. When they know the direction is right and they still get Look at her body language. She's holding her hands together like, oh, my God, I wouldn't risk money with this fucking bullshit artist. I don't know if anybody's a body language um, critiquist, but holy shit, right? Look at her. She's like, I'm not even going to open my – I don't trust my hand. Like, she's like, I'm not going to shake your hand. I'm, I'm going to keep my hand nice and fucking warm in my other hand because, holy fuck, you're so full of shit. Taken out is because of your stop losses get taken out fear missing out is anything fucking coming together here look at this guy what the fuck me i say don't listen to anyone who says have really tight stop losses well, what is really tight i mean dude how big are you in these fucking trades and he's gonna put on 40 standard lo- i'm really confident about this trade i put a 150 pip stop on it dude i'm gonna fucking i dude i've been there i bit be- we've all been there who is not taken out? The, instead of fuck moving it, take it the fuck out. If you are confident, don't have tight stop losses. You will lose money, even if you are right in guessing the direction. Are they ever a good idea? They're, they're good ideas sometimes, but then sometimes, yeah, sometimes I don't drink on the weekends. But most weekends, I'm out of my fucking mind. Jesus. Uh, really? And I would say, if you're not sure about your trade, then don't do it. Well, let's just see. This guy needs to take a class with Mark Douglas. Nobody puts on a trade thinking they're going to lose, dumb fuck. <laughs> this is just, what is this? This is some fucking, this is the bucket shop spokesman. Come trade with us. Come over, trade your account. Eh, don't worry about, eh, you saw you're down, what, <laughs> You you you're you're not, you're not, you're not, you didn't miss out. Huh? Don't do it. It's it's a good idea if you have a huge position that you know over the weekend or whatever some massive political event is going to happen and by the time you can catch up with it, it's too late. You wiped out. So in that case, it's good to have a stop loss. But still, I would say. So put up now. Listen to this fucking. He just mentioned size for the first time. Size matters. Some guy, this Chris Hanley guy, thought I was making a sex joke. No, I actually mean size matters. If I flip off, if I flip off a guy in a smart car, it's different than a flip off a trucker that's that has the ability to just cut me off and you know play um, go McLeod on me, you know, dual. So he said he finally mentioned size here. So what do you got a big stop on a fucking position because you got to hold it over the weekend. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck is he talking about? 
If you're trading big size, you're a scalper. How fucking retarded is this guy? If you're trying to make money, think about it. If you're in really big, if you're in 40,000 K, you're running tight stops. You're running stops. You're out. You're not holding that position over the weekend with a stop. You're holding small positions over the weekend with no stop, or you're holding small positions over the weekend with a wide stop. Is this fucking guy kidding? What time for... Let me see his fucking trading account. Don't have a, your stop losses too tight if you can help it, you know. If you can help it, you know, I'm like talking about. If, if it's a, you have to judge where you are, what... what what time of year you are, what, what's going on geopolitically. Oh, he's in swing trades, time of year. So he's a, fun, he's, a, he's, a, he's a position trader. But how is this helping me make money? You got to figure where, look how he looks around. Oh, you got all, he doesn't fucking know. You got to look around all the screens, figure out, whoa, what's going to do? What do you think about this trade, Joe? Politically, whether it's safe. Joe. Politically. No, look, dude, it's a fucking, fu dude, it's a fundamentalist fucking wide stab goober fuck. Is this what you're telling me now? Generally, to keep your position open without much of a, without a tight stop loss. Stop losses, I would say if there is a research done, that we have people would find is the m main reason why when they... If there was research done. So now we got to research it. You're bullshitting me. And, you know, but if there was research, how the fuck can people get away with this fucking sloppy logic in a world where people are trying to fucking make money goddamn trading? I guess the market direction, right, they got, they made, never made money because they get taken out. And the Yeah, right. You get the direction right, your stop's too tight. Get the direction right, your stop's too tight. Fear of missing out. This guy needs a fear of missing out class. <laughs> Am I suggesting to him open up 10 retail accounts and let's see you fucking manage 10 swing trades uh, on each account. Each currency has its own account. Let me see you manage that fucking shit. People who run the markets, they know their game. They know if they go down, before they go up, they're taking you out. They know their game. Dude, it's, there's, now this is the other problem I have. This is where it really triggers me the worst. Forget all his other fucking wrong thinking. Is this idea that the market's out to get you. Now, I was in a trading seminar, and uh, I think it was Bill Williams. In other words, once you are the market, that's your friend. He's your business friend. He's the guy that you're trading with. So the guy I talked to last night, what if I did a trade with him? Hey, listen, you give me money there? Okay. And write a contract, get an attorney, everybody's happy. It's not like, hey, man, you never paid me back. Remember I was nice to you? Like this fucking cunt that dumped me on Facebook. Oh, I helped you out one day. Now I own you. Get the fuck out of here. You're out of your mind, bitch. I'm watching your brain come unwrapped, and not everybody goes into Alzheimer's in a graceful manner. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with her. So, um, but this is, it's, it's, that's her version of love, actually. In other words, don't forget when somebody's yelling at you or somebody's pissed at you, it's because they care about you. I know this sounds perverse, but it's the truth, right? If they're pissed at you, it only means they love you more. If they piss you off, it's this uh, <laughs> anti-Stockholm syndrome, inverted uh, um, contrarian Stockholm syndrome. But this idea that, Oh, they know. They know. Who knows? Like the email I got from the guy. I'm curious what the bankers are thinking. They're not. They don't think. The market moves in. Why did Bitcoin go to 5,000? Because there was no resistance. The path of least resistance, Bill Williams. The path of least resistance is a natural phenomenon. The markets are a natural phenomenon built upon humans, and then humans created algorithms. And it's not pure algorithmic trading, although... It is, I mean, I'm a high-frequency trader. I'm not driving the market, but I'm participating in order flow based on stop, entry, market, entry. Like, there's very few market trades. That's why trading in the market's fucking retarded. Hello? It's because there's only... You, if you don't know the price level you want to get in at, 
you know, adding at the market that price level, I get the why people put a signal. Oh, put a signal there. Email me when it gets to this price. Okay, dude, are you going to pull the trigger now based on the fucking psychotic sell-off has distorted your view of that price now? It, y the guy that has a limit order says, I know the bankers are coming in at the 50-yard line. I'm just going to put a buy limit there. Oh, yeah, don't you want to see what happened? No. He's making money. Now, this is why I could take a completely virgin trader that's never fucking seen a chart. I could show them pure prices on a spreadsheet and go, you see this price? When people go to the store, now, you can go on YouTube, you can go on the Internet and look for an object. I used to watch um, the charts on computer parts drop. There's charts on computer parts. You can see this hard drive just went fucking through the floor. It is literally the whole market crashed, and I'm buying hard drives. So, but if I, but if I just said, oh, there's a sale now, people say, hey, you know what, half off. Why does half? Why does fifty percent retracement work? It's on sale, half off. Now this is the bullshit. I watched this fucking urban forex cunt go through this. Two hours of like, well, there's more cell phones. Is he talking to five-year-olds? I hope I'm not. Well, I hope I am. <laughs> five-year-old get what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean, actually, I'd like to take a five-fucking-year-old and make him a trader. They'd arrest me for fucking child labor laws, probably. There's some goddamn law. He would, he would get it. Oh, I see. Okay. No, uh, adults, the smarter you are, the harder it is to make money. Bill Williams. Yeah, because you know more shit. Yeah, more shit to fucking think. Yeah, but what if this? What if that? What about that? What about this? Well, Zero Hedge says that. What about this? Oh, I heard that's going to here. Well, the central bank's going to... What? I'm staring at a 15-minute chart, dude. I'm living inside of a world that every fucking 15 minute there's an opportunity. Rarely is there a market opportunity. Mostly I'm playing a chess game. I'm playing defense is stop entry. Classical, the psychology there is that you place a stop and the market proves you right. They go through your stop. There's enough momentum. And here's the trick. Trade breakouts in low volatility because you can run tighter stops. Three fucking pip stops to make eight pips on a 10K is eight fucking bucks. It's $80 if you've got cascaded orders in there. You got a nine pip stop, a 10 pip stop. I do it all day long. Six pip stop, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Those are all the tickets I'm running all the way to 15 pips, one pip apart. My exits are 8, 12, 14, 22, 38, 66, 99. I'm sitting there hitting the, fu oh, shit, yeah, it's fucking something's going to give. Somebody's going to get fucking slammed. Who can't see this shit? Go to the one-hour chart. Put stops in any other direction. What the fuck is wrong with people? Oh, I want to, oh no. What I want to do is, see, I, I looked at the dailies and they're in a downtrend. I, I talked to so many traders by now. I hear this a million times. Well, I look at the dailies. But dude, where's your stop? And then they're like, well, I go with watch stop. And, uh, but see, everybody has this, where are they starting? Now, the tight stop, and I get it, nobody likes getting stopped out. You just lost 80 cents. Ouch. Oof. Just lost five bucks. Oof. Just made 10 bucks. Now, this is what's happening on the half hour chart. It's a whole different world. You got to believe. See, in, it's a whole different universe. Let me just zoom out two days. Look at the British fucking pound. Can anybody see what I'm talking about? Can you imagine pending order banks down here? You don't give a fuck. Why does an ICT be saying, dude, just place the orders here. Okay, see you later. I'm done. Why isn't he trading live? He's in this demo account. He's like, oh, full disclosure, I'm in this demo account trading like a fucking goober in here too. 
I don't get it. I, ICT, I don't I I get maybe he's the first guy that ever say, hey, look, people. He's the guy that filled the gap, right? Between fucking Akel Stokes, Urkel Stokes, and uh, spread betting, right? He's the common man's. He's traded, right? Well, we've all traded, man, but dude, how are you helping people with your fears like this cunt on the fucking UK spread betting? Listen to this guy. How do you manage risk? With vodka. I manage risk. I don't really, I'm not a very... <laughs> well, see, we're talking about stop losses here. He can't manage risk. That's why he doesn't fucking put a stop on. He's not a risk manager. Look at him. Like, well, you got me there. You got me there. Good risk manager because I'm very brave in my trade. He's very brave in his trading. His ego's so fucking big. My ego's very big, so what I do here is the most important forex trade in the world. I go all the way in. So notice how the body language here. He's like, well, honey, I'm not going to see the size of my dick. In, um, I'm good and bad, but... Uh, but I... Now she's got her hands down. She's grinning. She's like, well, maybe later on you and I could... Consider where I am at that time. What are my risks? More, more on an intuitive level, and when I do, oh, into so he's a magical thinker. Great approach, great trading strategy. By going all the way in, I mean now all the way in. <laughs> wow, hope he's not on top. She could get hurt. Now I am all the way in. <laughs> <laughs> Man, wow, he's boy plunger. That's what they called me. <laughs> When I, I, I'm a boy plunger too, but see the thing is, should he be teaching anybody? Can't we see ourselves in the mirror and go, yeah, I, I know I get in too early. Who doesn't? But this is the trick. You're in a little bitty position too early. Eh, just little baby stops. It all adds up. Leaky faucet. So my buddy last night said $5 a day adds up to $1,800 a year. And I go, bullshit. So he got the calculator out and he was right. And I go, Got eighteen hundred dollars. That's a, if I could make five dollars a day trading, I could make. I could claim I'm making eighteen hundred dollars a year. Christmas on Dow Jones hitting nineteen thousand, and I think it will. So he did his little. Um, he did that thing that the uh, black girls do with his head. He kind of went like, "Oh yeah, like I can predict the market direction. Like I'm so good at this. You have no idea." What methods do you employ to minimize losses? <laughs> Not stop losses. I just start drinking the water. The good vodka that I got there. Uh, I generally have. Oh, he's got to puff his cheeks out. She's like, holy shit. She's got her hands back together. I don't trust you anymore. I have a stop loss, but my stop losses are. He had to swallow hard on that. Well, my stop losses there. Okay, wait. Okay, wait a second. No. I want to sit. Are you Not tight. At they're not all. tight, not tight at all. They're very wide because I have a very wide stance, you know. Uh, that's not my shoe. My shoe accidentally crept under the stall door. It's just, uh, it's just wide stance. Stop losses, really, and intuition. And if I see a trend, intuition. You know, uh, so I spent two thousand dollars with Dr. Van Tharp for three days in Chicago, and I'm not playing. Every time I talk about it, I'm playing back what happened. My memory's pretty good of the situation, and uh, he said something about that. Um, what he just said, I just lost my train of thought here. And intuition. And if I oh, intuition. He'd say, you're into wishing. You're into wishing, not, you have no intuition. You're wishing the market goes your way. I see a trade is not going my way. I know it within a day. Wow. So he'll be underwater for a day. He, now, doesn't he say to himself, ma'am, I should have hedged that entry. Maybe I shouldn't have. This is where Mark Douglas says, you don't have to know where the market's going to make money. So he's. On my chart here, can you see how I don't have to know where the market's going to make money? I could I could put in a hedge during quiet sessions. Here, there's no fucking hedge, right? What was the input? Where could I have got in on this chart here where I could have made a pant load of money and needed another, another depends? It's right here in this triangle. Holy God. And you could have held through. Now, see, if you trail your stop. You're, you're an idiot, right? You have to take something off the table here. This is probably the 618 pullback here. But if you if you never got out and you started to sell into this, you're long, you're selling into that. 
Wow, what a trade, right? What a trade. And then it goes full auction. Takes out the high of the day, takes out the low of the day, engulfs, comes back to retest, goes sideways. I mean, really? There's so much money on this chart. It's just mind boggling. Who's trading 40 currencies? And uh, you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, boy. Okay, so go back to spread better, uh, spread better central. I don't have to wait five weeks to know. Within a day, I know if this. See, I'm impatient. I don't have to wait the five weeks. I wait the six weeks. They stop me out. Fuck them. I get back in the market. Fuck it. They don't. Don't they know who I am? This trade is not going to my go my way, and I close it. I was going to ask her, what do you do? Do you close? Do you yeah, put more I would, in? I close it, and I. No feelings. How do you... No feelings. Wow. <laughs> I, this, is the, this is the best... I mean, this, this doesn't get better than that. Interview a trader. I, I don't know. Maybe he's a professional trader. He's a trader businessman. So he's he can't... Tra he's not a trader. <laughs> Determine if a trade has failed other than its performance after entry. I think if... It has gone too far. Let's say I have gone long, I have bought, and it's gone too far down on, in the first couple of days. Even the first day, I know this is not going to go my way. And I but can't he understand that if he had a tight stop, he would have been out of that fucking trade and he could have gone into another instrument with his free margin? What is wrong with this guy? Can anybody see how fucked up this guy's thinking? This is a lesson unto itself listening to this guy. Now, this presupposing you don't believe him. If you believe him because he's wearing a... Uh, well, he doesn't have no tie, so he's trying to appeal to the more casual people. But seriously, are you kidding me? I I'd love to read the comments in here. I close it. I think within a day, I know if I should close it. But I don't know if this works for someone who's trading FX or, you know, because it's quite quick. I think if you see it, it's not, you've got a kind of time frame in your head. If it's... Wow. He's just, he's lying to himself. Going too much in the other direction, another... Too much? So it's the amount of movement now? Like, let me interview him. Like, God, I'd love to interview this guy. They wouldn't broadcast it. I just ripped this fucker to shreds. That's the only reason I'm doing it here. This is my only fucking way to cure my anger is to bitch on internet about these fuck nuts. Pattern is developing. So you close it without feeling and you wait to recognize the pattern again. You make up for it. See, and they, they're, what he believes is true. He's trading his belief system that the market's out to get them. So they let, he lets the market get them. Can anybody see this? He's projecting his view of the markets out to get him, so he makes sure that he gets gotten to keep that belief fucking real. See, this is why when we change our belief systems, it's scary to change our belief systems about reality because, or about the markets because then what? Which, which one do I believe? Do I believe this or that? The new thing's making my money, but it's against my belief system. This isn't right. It shouldn't be this easy to make money. Now, I'm not saying it's not effortless. You have to fucking hit the keyboard every 15 minutes, but you're like, Jesus, I can't believe this is fucking working. I don't have to know where the market's going. If I'm a risk manager, which this guy is not, can you wear all those hats at once? Risk manager and dynamic trader. Yeah, because on the weekend, you build your risk models. When the market's open, you, you can build them. When the market's open, and it's maybe better to build them if you can do that, but you could make the weekend risk building and the whole week, next week trading. Have fun. If you're not having fun trading, you'll never fucking make money. Who's writing a hit song pissed off? Sad, maybe contemplative, the part of your brain that's um, contemplation is the first act. Before the execution, there's contemplation. What would happen if I hit this button? Well, you'd lose a dollar. Oof. Ouch. Okay, you hit it 10 times, you're down 10 bucks. And it gets a sadder, sadder story. 
Okay, well, I think it's really going up this time. I'm going to go 50 pip stops, uh, 40K. <laughs> Fuck them. You could do that trade, actually. In other words, you got a pea shooter. The monster's still coming. You go to the BB gun, monster's still coming. Okay, motherfucker. I've been saving this for the apocalypse, zombie apocalypse, when this grid goes down, but I have a bazooka today. I have three bazookas. Did anybody see Death Wish 7? I, I'm a Death Wish addict, uh, Charles Bronson. I could go watch it right now, actually. Anger, anger man's dream. Revenge dream. Revenge on the markets. You shouldn't do that. I don't think ICT's full of shit. Oh, don't revenge trade. Why not? I've got a button for that. I got a trade plan for that fucking shit, dude. I got the pussy trades too. I got the goober entries. Oh, four pips away with a hundred pips stop to make uh, two hundred pips. I'll never see the two hundred pips. I got that. I got that fucking in my head too. Who doesn't have that shit in their head? Come on, people. What the fuck? Now here's the next thing that pisses me off. Are the markets fucking rigged? This is the malevolent universe theory from the Marxist ideology. Postmodern bullshit fucking head. That's why. We end up at Jordan Peterson. When I heard Jordan Peterson, I said, this fucker's talking about trading. Because trading's about living. Your lifestyle. You can't separate your lifestyle from your trading. Mark Douglas will tell you point blank, if you're pissed at your wife, I was telling the story to my buddy last night of how I was sabotaging my other career in the 3D world because my wife was such a bitch that I made sure I fucked up and I had to work all night. And I tell her, because I didn't want to lie to her, I said, well, you know, I got to sit here and remake this shit. It's due tomorrow. So I would run deadlines so that I was really using that to protect myself from her insanity. I thought, I'd rather have, I'd rather just sit here and work. <laughs> I want to just be alone. And this is why I just ended up going, you know what? That's the answer. Some people are introverts. <laughs> so I'm guilty. I can go out, I can do one-on-one -on -one with somebody, but I can't go into a crowd of people because you can only talk small talk and then there's, I don't know, you really can't get any kind of depth of, uh, uh, you can't do a quick swap of concepts with somebody. You know, like, yeah, I end up talking to one person anyways, right? You, you know, unless you're broadcasting. So the problem with the, with the, channel I have is that I don't know what level people are trading at and thinking at and the questions people ask, it's the classic question. Or the attack is, well, show me your real money. If that shit works, well, no, it, it works if you work it, just like AA. So this out of the market's rig bullshit just pisses me off. This is so unoptimistic, so, un so unromantic that you can't get more unromantic other, other than going to the gynecologist and thinking that the exam is sex, Right? Why can't you rely on... Oh, can't you? She almost said, can't, can't you? Why are you a can't... She's using the uh, hand signal, uh, the Trump hand signal, where she puts her fingers to a precise... She's making a point, you know. I like how she's buttoned up. That's actually a little hot. I'm glad she's not getting all breasty on him. But he's definitely... It's, it's cute, because the girl interviews the macho trader. It's, it's this classic... And I wonder if they, look at this, look at the fucking trigger words on this fucking title. Markets are rigged. Using charts and technical analysis alone is a road to the poor, 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 poor house. I want some more porch, please. Technical analysis and charts alone to have results on the market. I think you can't have... Not because is that how they speak? They use the word "cunt" every fucking. Is this Br a British? No wonder they're using that word all the time. Anything wrong with charts and fundamentals? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to trade or buy equities or trade indices or gold or you know forex or anything for that matter, it's the intelligent thing to do. I should look at charts and I should look at fundamentals. The problem you have there, which I discovered very early in my trading is that everybody else is looking at the same charts and the same fundamentals and so what i've heard this argument i mean come on so what what does that have to do with me making money is this going to help me make money the market is looking at the same charts and the fun the market doesn't know the market exists and it doesn't know you exist this is what this guy doesn't understand 
Do you think the tree in my yard looks at itself and says, hey, I'm being a tree today? The markets are a piece of nature. Do the markets look at themselves and go, you know, by the way, just to let you know, your dick may be the size of a small stadium, but I am the market. Fundamentals. The market knows you as a retail trader is looking at that chart. The market doesn't know I exist. This is complete fucking uh, scare tactic. I, I mean, but where did this come from? Well, when it rained outside one day, people said, we can't explain that, so we're going to say the rain fairies are making it rain. He's talking about the market fairies are stopping you out. Haven't we progressed past the dark ages of fucking thinking? I thought we were supposed to be living from the neck up now with our fucking iPhones. You got all these fucking people on their, their Googleness, And they, were they dumbing down people? Like, oh, it's just spoon fed to you. Now you have to fucking concretize or use concepts in reality. And you're going to buy at a certain level. And you're going to sell at a certain level. They know, they predict what you're going to do. So they, they predict what you, now it's the markets of they. The market just turned into a they. They predict what you, this is, I hate this shit. I hate this all day long and twice on Tuesday. This guy is so full of it. Do the opposite, because if they don't, they're not going to take your money. And look at her, yeah. Okay, so now, now she's like, you know what, this guy, I got my hands on class. I see what you're saying, boss. So you're bound to lose if you're just relying on technical analysis and fundamentals because they know exactly what chart you're looking at. The million they know what chart I'm looking at. So they know I'm on the fifth. Dude, you don't understand. There's drones outside your house. I remember years ago, it was this like 15 years ago, they could see your computer screens. Yeah, with the right gear. Who wants to see your fucking... <laughs> How is that helping? I mean, you can make a million dollars a month trading. That's not a lot of money, right? You think the 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 market, the market, that's like the crowd. This all starts with Ayn Rand for me. Uh, I used to listen to this guy on the radio, Mark Scott, and he talked about Ayn Rand, and he said, the, the, the mob, right? The people out there, there is, it's all individuals. There's no crowd. There is no, I can't remember what he called it, but um, the public, there is no public. It's a bunch of individuals acting in unison, whether they build algorithms, whether it's one guy pulling a trigger at a big bank and, but the banks are trading against each other. So that cancels out the big boy myth because big boys trade against big boys. Well, there's a winning big boy. But, dude, people on the other side of that trade, look at the chart I just showed you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the big boys are doing. You have to be your own big boy or little boy. And you build an account. Or you scalp it. Or you blow it up because it's entertainment for you. You have enough money. You don't need to trade to make money. Don't forget, I'm only speaking to people who want to trade for a living would have to just start to look at it like, listen, this is just like had a bad day. Uh, there's a leak on the roof and some fucking asshole came in here, just robbed us, whatever that is. And um, so let me continue with this fuck nut. People look at the same, oh, I've looked at the charts. I know where it's going to be a sell. And but he's the guy that's done that. He's looked at the charts. He's running a wide stop. He's confident. How is he any different? This thing about people separating themselves from what's really true. So, so the guy that said, let me see your results. It doesn't matter. They change every day. And hopefully we're all getting better at trading because we're thinking, yeah, it is about how tight my stop is. I don't have to know where the market's going to make money. I used to think I did. Everybody says, where's it going? This is the question I always get when you're, when you when you when you're in a relationship with somebody, they say, "Well, where's this relationship going?" The the girl always asked me this. I said, "I don't know." And the reason why is because I'm too chaotic. So, when the girl's chaotic, I ask her the same thing: "Where do you see this relationship going? Are you, are you just gonna like just fuck like rabbits and then just meet on weekends and just have like rape sex and then not see each other all week?" Like, oh, okay, well that's it. 
that's the format. I, I'll go work for five days and weekend we get together and it's like honeymoon all, or do we move in together and just drive ourselves crazy? No, because they know that, they see the same chart. <laughs> They're not gonna give it to you. This is ridiculous. Because we all seen the same chart, they're not going to give it to you. Why don't you give it to yourself? Why was this victimhood shit come from? I'm a victim of circumstance. The rain fairies are making it rain. The lightning fairies took out my, my boyfriend. He was walking down the street with me and boom. Yeah, he must have fucking pissed off the gods. The lightning gods. The, the dark ages. We're listening to the dark ages. You want this in your fucking brain? When you're running a business called trading... You own your own business. You own your you got your own accounts. You got your pile of fucking money. How do you trade this? Do you wait for the price of gold? If you own a gold refinery, you're hedging in the fucking futures markets. People are like, well, why do the futures market exist? Get that house. When gold starts going up, when go when gold goes up, right now there and the people, are, what are the big boys doing? The big boys are selling gold to hedge their fucking real gold pile stacker assets at their goddamn fucking gold refinery. How in the fuck? And this guy's saying supply and demand. This, it's a bottomless pit of bullshit from this guy that supply and demand is not real because there's a spread lag. When the guy that owns the refinery and gold spikes and he shorts into that because he owns the gold, he has a factory that fucking makes ingots. He has a vested interest, but see, with all the clickbait shit out there, people want to get views on YouTube with all their, oh, it's the end of the world, tune into me, it's the end of the world. I get it, right? It's like watching the Kardashians with this fucking Bruce Jenner fuck nut. Mentally fucking ill. I know it's, it's, it's like my buddy used to look at, we'd drive down a road and he'd slow down to see the most horrifying crash. Now I have a threshold for disgust that's so low that I could throw up if I saw that. And he's like, let's check this out. I'm like, let's not. If they give it to you, if they let you buy it at that level. If they give it to you, if they let you. If they let you. So my friend last night, he says, you know, when I was a kid, they wouldn't let me fucking have any toys. So now he's got all these fucking toys. This is what men do who have money. I want to replicate my childhood I never had. This is what fucking goddamn... Uh, uh, just a fucking unique talent uh, Michael Jackson was in other words Michael Jackson was just being himself people say he's a genius I, the genius thing just they it's overused it's like oh, totally awesome dude no he's unique he was himself so you know Michael Jackson finally made a bunch of money so he built fucking Neverland this is the old fucking you know Tinkerbell, this is the old um, I don't want to grow up song, right? I don't want to grow up. Uh, I can't remember the fucking classic story with Tinkerbell. I <laughs> think you know what I'm talking about. Well, they, they're not going to take your money. They're dead. So this, this the, the, the fear of losing, and then you have the replicate your childhood once you get money. To take your money. So are the markets rigged? 100% they're rigged, but thank God they're rigged. I am. See now, the, what he, he's saying is true. He finally said something is true. Thank God they're rigged, but he doesn't seem to know how they're rigged. Thank God they're rigged. Now, he's going to do this whole body language thing where he's like, thank, let me just talk about that. Thank God they're rigged. And now he's going <laughs> to... It's really interesting how he goes to this part where he's he's right. He's totally right now. He's speaking the truth. Thank God they're fucking rigged. And thank God, another thing, I'm going to go for another one here. Thank God they're manipulated. This idea that manipulating the markets to trap you, to fuck you. No, you're taking, you're deciding to see the market in that, in that, in that, um, in that structure. You don't see structure. You don't see, like... You, you can't think like the other guy. You're thinking like, oh, it's a buy. I'm a buyer today. Really? Maybe you should look at the fucking true range of each bar and see what's just about to happen. Not what has happened. Those are the limit order placements. That's where you know all those pockets and all those vacuums. 
could potentially fill, retrace, go full auction, engulf the whole fucking day, the whole week. Your swing trade, you just made 500 pips. You made 200 pips on a swing trade. You built into the four-hour, the eight-hour window you built into. You scalp that, too. Don't forget, you have to scalp around your swing. You'll never fucking pay the rent unless you know how to scalp. I don't scalp. You do now. If it's just a 1K, what's wrong with getting the fuck out of that trade? Oh, I understand. I'm using Gartley's and I got fucking 20 ciphers and a goddamn cat, Siamese cat pattern. I'm happy they are rigged. I'm happy the stock markets are rigged. So how do we use... He's not really happy they're rigged. His body language is like, you know, you're making me a little uncomfortable. I know they're rigged, but I don't understand where to get in and get out still. This to our advantage. Okay. First of all, I am absolutely over the moon that stock markets are rigged since I found it's rigged and fixed. I said, thank God they're fixed and rigged. And people still... As she looked down at his, at his manhood and said, I don't believe you. I just see your... I see you... you, you put, you're just completely full of it. Uh, your, your body language is, yeah, they're rigged, but... Now, here's where the ego comes in, because he's going to say he can predict the market. People don't believe they're rigged. People go, oh, the demand of supply, oh, price of dollar, price of this, gold has gone up, and all of them. But that is what's happening. There is supply and demand. There's pressure built up on either side of these things. And when the market gives, do you have a trade plan to get in on the way to that fucking uh, exit? Come out wrong, because they're rigged. So it, they, they don't move to any kind of logical uh, pattern. What the fuck did he just say? Now, he says, I'm glad they're rigged. <laughs> when I think rigged, when I first heard that, I thought about the rigging on a ship, the sailboat, the rigging. Look up the word rigging, and I'm not going to go through this fucking etymology site, but I love to look at the derivation of these words. It's rigged. What is the rig? And you know, you really tap into, what is this guy really trying to say? Most of the time. And so most of the time, he said most of the time, this is interesting. The time. Wait, let me go back. And move to any kind of logical uh, pattern most of the time. Most of the time it doesn't move to any logical pattern. Well, that's right, because... <laughs> 80% of the market's chop. So what he's talking about, he's a trend trader. He's obviously a trend trader. So he's saying there's very few trades out there, as we're trying to say. And imagine if the markets, imagine if the U.S. markets were not rigged. They're imagine all the markets. So if they weren't rigged. They were not fixed every day then you would have all kinds of rumors, you would have certain parties influencing it, taking it up and down. You would never make money. It would be such a mess. It is a mess. What the fuck is this guy talking about? That's what we do have. They're not rigged. Not in the sense he thinks they're rigged. Can, can anybody just see how full of shit this guy is? Am I the only one? Tell me I'm full of shit. Let's, let's have a debate. Let's have a trading debate. This guy? Are you kidding me? It, it, it's such a, such a chaos. How could you possibly make money? Oh, my God. It is chaos. I am making money. Look at his fucking, he's completely dumbfounded that it's possible to make money without knowing the direction of the market. Is he kidding? He's on a different level. He's on, I'm a trend trader. I have wide stops. I'm fucking a kill. I'm, I'm equal, Urkel Stokes. Well, how to read a price chart. You'll be like uh, trading some stocks. How to read a trade is what I'm saying. How to read a trade entry. Not how to read a price chart. How to read a a trade plan on that price chart. Do you see your trade plan on that price chart? Do you see the five pip entry, guys? Do you see the eight? Do you see the 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 fourteen pip profit guys on that chart? I do. Somebody just made fourteen pips because they fucking bought support on the five minute thing. 
Somebody just did that. And I'm just saying somebody because the market moved and there was probably, I'm just going to go out on a limb that not if 95% of people are losing money, there's 5% of the people that are getting in that fucking entry that's fucking painfully fucking obvious. Which some news comes from here and there. But when you're rigged, when they're rigged, when I know, okay, today they're going to, from here to New Year, they're going to take Dow Jones from 18 to 19,000 plus. He knows where the market's going. He knows. Why even trade with stops? Why don't you get in really big on that trade? Why don't you bet the fucking ranch you're so confident? This is bullshit. Let's see his results. He should be a zillionaire. What is he doing this interview for? He should be in lockdown. I don't talk to people. I'm so rich. You don't understand. I don't want anybody to know who I am. They might take off my, cut my finger off and go to the fucking ATM and get my money out of the account with my cut off fucking finger and scan my fingerprint before the blood sucks out of it and distorts the fingerprint pattern. Plus and then 20,000. So I know that's their plan. So I can predict that. So I can bet on that. He knows that's their plan, so he can bet on that. I mean, literally, the guy's a fucking gambler. In the end, he's just a fucking goober gambler. Because it's rigged. Yes. It because it's rigged that she's like, well, you're so clever. If it was left to, like, supply and demand and this trade. If it was left to supply and demand, like I just said about what, how, what moves the gold market. South African mines, the price of crude. What, what is... Why does gold cost what it costs? How much does it cost to get gold out of the ground? Is the price going up because it's harder and harder to mine gold? Fuck yeah! Supposedly there's only two Olympic swimming pools of gold on the planet. You don't fucking know that. Another bullshit fucking myth. Stop it! My head's going to explode from bullshit on the fucking... It's a double-edged sword. There's information out here. And some of it is completely fucking insane. They buying that or that rumor coming from there, it would go up and down and go nowhere and no. No. It does go up and down and go nowhere. Is this guy fucking kidding me? I just showed you the British pound goes up and down at the end of the day. It might finish unchanged for the week. I, I didn't even look at the weekly chart. I bet it closed where it opened. But it raped every every goddamn goober in the world's been raped to death, even with a hundred pip stop. If he was trying to think, well, you know what? They're going to take this thing. I know what the banks are thinking. I, uh, I used to work at a bank. My name's ICT. Nobody would make money. It wouldn't be a, a market worth uh, trading on. And I would say try to figure out the macro geopolitical agendas. And This is complete bullshit. Fundamental is fucking bull. Try to figure out the macro. Well, you know, Trump said he's going to go after North Korea. Well, I'm going to get in the fucking yen. What? the psychology of the market rather than the technical and fundamental analysis. He just talked about fun. I can't take it. So I'm going to go to Jordan Peterson. Now this is, there's issues in this thing too, but I, I, I try to avoid, I'm going to try to resist commenting what I see here as far as the experiment that's done here. But uh, Jordan Peterson to me is the king of Forex trading. The king. I'm watching this on a fucking loop. If, Mark Douglas is alive, I'd say, look at the fucking way you can plug this shit into the market psychology, your psychology, your distortion of reality, how you see stuff, how you see the market, how you see stuff. So this ICT guy, when his webinar was talking about, well, you know, you see, yeah, because you're distorting market data. You see what you want to see. You know what? She's got a nice ass and she does have a little money she inherited and, uh, like these people that call him Stefan Molyneux show, cracking me the fuck up. Stefan Molyneux, stop it with this political shit. You're, you're boring me to death. Your interviews suck a dick. Your audio sucks a dick on Skype. You just, you suck a dick. But see, people are hungry. Tell me, what's the secret of life? What's the secret of trading? Now, this guy has got a head on his shoulders fucking um, Jordan Peterson. So I'm addicted to Jordan B. Peterson. I find solace in his uh, thinking out loud, holding concepts in his head, and he's he's got these, and he's um, kind of break stuff down for you, and he's a psychologist. He's my mentor. So, a mentorship you don't have to have 
all my teachers in my life are my mentors, and it's hard to do. I don't know what the word mentor means, honestly, but I guess teacher. Somebody who knows more than you or somebody who is on a different path than you that you want to check out their path to see, well, let me see your results. And then, of course, I can't jump. I have fear of heights, so I know I'm never been a, I'll never be a good skydiver. I'm never going to put a GoPro on my head and go, dude, check out this fucking video. I know I'm not that guy. So knowing who you are and the personality. So what Peterson's talking about is personalities. Plus, plus he's talking about your brain. This is very fascinating. I can watch this over and over. And this monkey business illusion was created by Dan Simon. It's a little bit of a rigged. Okay, this is rigged a little bit. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to – I think everybody can see how rigged it is in a way because – the premise of the experiment is it's rigged. <laughs> I don't want to. I want to. I don't want to sound inappropriate, but I think when you see it, it's going to occur to anybody who's of the opposite sex that it's rigged. Anybody who's a guy is going to see how rigged this is. But that aside, it is true that if you focus on one thing in the market, you literally can't see. What the fuck's going on? And I think if you come to the market with this primed, you've primed your brain with a bias of bullish or bearishness, you're already fucked. In a way. Not to say the market isn't an uptrend. You shouldn't buy pullbacks in that. But for a, for a guy that can counter trend trade the market on a scalp, he sees the trend like the guy said, everybody sees the market. Yeah, we all see the same market. But who's going to step up to the plate every half hour, one hour, four hours every day and pull the trigger? Pull the trigger means trade at the market. So that's a classic. And you're triggered by the market movement. You see an opportunity. You hit the trigger. Holy fuck. That's what this guy, you know, this Chris Hanley guy is really kind of doing. You watch him trade. He's like, oh, look it. Okay, boom. Look it. Boom. Oh, move my stop. I'm working percentage risk. I, you know, you know, bless his heart. He's, he's going to do a YouTube channel. But let's face it. That's not the trade. No, few people can trade other people's trade plans. Because you, if you know that you're very quick on the draw, you're going to be a scalper or a sniper. You can be a sniper. There's, but when you see the swing traders saying they made 300 pips in, in um, 40 hours, you're like, damn. If I was in the size I'm in now on this scalp and I did that trade, so when this guy's talking about the stop loss thing and position sizing, that's why it's this whole continuum of risk to size to stop to time frame to there's so much shit there. So the uh, I'm going to go to the the thing that's Bill Williams says is you have a neck top computer it's the fastest computer in the world, but it can only think one thing at a time. So if you're in the, it, it, if on the weekend you're building your um, reptilian survival program that you don't want to blow up your account or you don't want to lose X per day, you write the scripts and you say, if I hit this button, see, now you've taken it down to, there's no fear because you literally know, I mean, you hit this button, it's going to cost you 20 bucks or two bucks. And your trade plans are always in front of you, at least for me. I can double click a thing and say, oh, you know, or I can hand place a limit and go, oh, you know, this looks like a fucking insane stop out zone. Like you just know if it ever comes down here, people are going to shit their pants. Either people are going to go, look, it's going down. They're selling into that, not realizing that it's just really a, in the end, it's just an auction. The market doesn't know you exist. That nobody's out to get you just because you're paranoid doesn't mean somebody's out to get you. Argument of life. So here's the, uh, so I'm just going to go through this thing. And, of course, um, I don't know if I sped this up. So I'm, I'm at a higher speed. I, I had to take it up a little bit because he speaks slowly. <laughs> the other guy does too. I could, uh, I'm going to go put a 25% compression on here just because, uh, I don't know, this is kind of a nice YouTube feature. <laughs> you can just say, dude, uh, get to the fucking point kind of setting. <laughs> so I'm going to play the uh, Jordan Peterson. And I always think... The whole time he's talking, I'm thinking about me and the market and how I visualize rea reality. So when you look at the price that it is right now, that's the well, the, the real realities uh, on this continuum where you're living in the moment, but it's constant. You're you're only living in the moment, and 
the future's coming at you, so you're making predictions, and the past is behind you, and that is the um, the burden of how, like how do you let go of the past while predicting the future? There's a balance point where you're living in the moment, and the past you've accepted um, uh, intellectually accepted the fact that you can't change the past, and all you all you can do is. Um, live in the pr have a trade plan for what's going on right now in the market, and you can do not to say you can't predict the market, but you could actually predict both outcomes. You could have a bullish and bearish outcome. So, I mean, you're actually an objectivist at that point because now you can see, hey, listen, I don't disagree with it, could go up and down. And if I bracket the market with stops, I don't have to decide that, I can be a hedger. And I'm going to pay a little bit more if they trap me on some. But if I have 48K above and 48K below with completely different entries and exits, they can't fucking, they can't hurt me. The big boys can't hurt me. And the market that's out to get me can't hurt me. Because I have multiple layers. I don't just have one moat. I've got 20 moats and I've got fake castles and you can't fucking touch me. It's a chess game where I can castle nine castles on the chessboard. 3D chess from Star Trek. I've cast, dude, you, my king, it's going to take you so many moves to get to me. So I'm always thinking, and like this guy's, you know, I, I stumbled across Jordan Peterson, I think like a year and a half ago, through some other link thing, and I was like, listen to this motherfucker. Man, he reset. Now, he, granted, he's also, and I saw I saw the critique by um, the objectivist um, Joran Brock criticizing him, intellectually criticizing his uh, non-atheistic, but you have to put all that aside. Just like, let's face it, uh, Carlos Santana is a liberal to beat the band. So is this fuck nut Waters. But you can't deny it's beautiful music. And this is what Jordan Peterson describes immediately why that exists. Because musicians are high in openness and they're not conservative. So they're low in logic. But that's why they're creative. So how can you trade the market knowing your personality type, knowing your Achilles heel, whatever have, and knowing what's but so the idea is to grow, to grow up, actually. This is when you come back to the Peter Pan thing. I don't want to grow up. It, so what grown-ups do is they become their own big boys and they trade the market and they just say, you know, I, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to pull the trigger on that, pull the trigger. But you pull the trigger so many times, now it's just the drudgery of trading. It's not exciting anymore. It was more fun when I used to blow up my accounts. Now it's like, eh, I'm making about, uh, you know... 10% a day. Yeah, I'm making 10% a day, you know. But, uh, oh, fuck. I miss the good old days of crashing the car. And remember that time we crashed the car? There's a beautiful song by, uh, um, probably the most tender uh, love song I've ever heard is by um, Thomas Dolby. Last cut on the album of, uh, oh, I can't remember, maybe I'll put the, Beautiful song. Remember that time we crashed the Chrysler, he says? And it just is this nostalgic thing. So that's, so you have your nostalgic brain, your romantic brain. Then you have your conservative brain and your, no, this has got to be completely, didn't you see Lawrence Donald have a meltdown? Here's an anal retentive motherfucker that's, everything has to be totally precise. <clears throat> he goes on here, he's got this pencil. You see the OCD shit going on there? Um, I'm fascinated by people's personalities. I think it's funny to make fun of yourself and funny to make fun of other people. So this guy, people, I can't believe you're... Why not? You live once, say what you got to say, then blow yourself up. Complex beyond comprehension. And that's a big problem. I mean, you think about all the subatomic complexity. That's, that's a horrible thing. And then there's the complexity at the atomic level, and that's... Think about the five-minute chart. I think about the hourly chart. See, to me, every time I hear this guy speak, I'm like, holy shit, he's a traitor. He doesn't know it. You know, pretty overwhelming. And then there's the molecular. Pretty overwhelming. 
level, which makes the atomic level look simple. And then there's all the comp exceedingly complex structures that emerge out of the molecular level, especially in living. He just said structures. So there's the intermarket hedging. There's the Dow Jones against the here. There's the um, correlation. The guy, this guy, Chris Hanley's looking at the dollar index, the Dixie using that for a cue for his trade directions and instruments that uh, he's a nice guy but when you're trading the dollar against the pound it's about the pound it's not about the dollar this dixie doesn't matter i, I don't recommend anybody look at the uh, maybe maybe it's maybe it's making you feel safer but it doesn't mean in the end it's going to be how big are you and how tight you stop and all this other kind of real world boring shit organism so that would be roughly at the organ level of existence you know and then there's you as a totality with your brain which is and the brain is so much more complex than everything else in the universe that it's not even in the same category so there are estimates for example by Gerard Edelman that there are more connections in your brain more patterns of connections in your brain than there are subatomic particles in the universe so you know that's one major league complex thing and there's lots of them around and you know they're all integrated into okay I fucked that up a little bit um so here that there are more connections in your brain, more patterns of connections in your brain than there are subatomic particles in the universe. So, you know, that's one major... That's a, that's a scary thought right there. There's more ticks on a chart than a, if, a, if a woodchuck could chuck ticks, how many chicks could he... ...major league complex thing, and there's lots of them around, and, you know, they're all integrated into families and then, uh, you know, roughly tribal groupings, some of which get large enough to be nations, and then that's all embedded inside of some biological system, and so on and so forth, all the way out to the limits of the cosmos. I mean, this is one complicated place. And, you know, your job, in, in large part, is to understand it, but also not to become overwhelmed by it, because you have... See, I don't want to be overwhelmed by the market. I, I want to understand it. This is all the stuff to me that just, it just speaks market to me all day long with this guy. And I'm finding it... Um, like I said, there's comfort in knowing that I'm not the only one having a hard time figuring out what the fuck to do, when to do it. You have to simplify it down to the point where you can sort of think about one thing and do one thing. And so you have to screen all of that out. You screen all of it out with scripts. You have one trade plan, right? You have one approach. It is overwhelming. This is why you have to go, you have to focus, narrow your focus for each. I'm not saying you can't, you have just one. The scripts allow you to have multiple trade plans. So that the complexity, complexity doesn't overwhelm you when you're attempting to do anything, anything simple, even to look at yourself in the mirror, which is also a very complicated thing to do. Part of the problem your brain is, is always facing is, what can I ignore? And the answer to that is, well, you need to ignore almost everything, and, and that's... So this is the thing. You can't take into consideration all this fundamentals, all this supply and demand. You're just literally saying... I have a I have a plan for every every 15 minutes in the market. Do I have, do I have a plan for every? 15, that's what I'm asking myself. Do I have a 15 minute plan? That's a problem because of course it's not always obvious what it's okay what's okay for you to ignore, you know, and that changes on you suddenly too because you know because you have imperfect knowledge you might think something's irrelevant and it turns out to be of critical importance. It's deadly. Right. So what happens here is that people say, well, you know, I should have watched the news because if I would have actually gone with that fundamental trader signal service. He was right about the direction of the market. And I, I really should, because I lost on that trade. Now, if you won on the trade and you actually guessed the same direction as he did, and it just market just happened to move in your favor, you would never question yourself and say, you know what, maybe there's something. I, this is when you go back on another search hunt for more knowledge and more ability to be a better trader because you think, well, I, maybe the Carly Patterns is where it's at. I mean, the Carly Pattern trader guy had the same trade I had. And so, therefore, you're going to make that kind of assumption. Naturally, right? You, and now you're going to do hindsight kind of where they say, um, well, the trick mentally is to reframe your past and make it sound like it was better than it was, right? Now, Stephen Molly should try that instead of uh, pissing and moaning about how his mommy was so mean to him. Dude, that's what made you a fucking man, you dumb bitch. What the fuck is Stephen Molly you? He's such a fucking pussy fuck. And then he's like, oh, yeah, my mom was so mean to me. Dude, she fed you. Shut the fuck up. You're here to bitch about it? It's a deadly, deadly, difficult problem. And so one of the ways that we solve this is we're actually pretty blind to, to, to almost everything, you know. Our sensory 
input is limited by our physiological limitations, certainly. So there's like, in terms of vision, we only see a very small uh, little slice of the whole electromagnetic spectrum. And it's the same with sounds. And, you know, we can only touch things that are basically within our reach. And so that limits things substantially. And, and then there are also things we can't detect, like we're not very good at detecting. Um, like we don't have the same ability that say, uh, say platypuses and some fish can detect electromagnetic disturbances around them on their skin and like their senses. Yeah, these scalpers, man, they can see a fucking tick chart entry. I'm telling you, if you look at the tick chart long enough, you'd be like, yep, if I nail it here and you could practice on a demo, you're like, yeah, I'm that guy. I'm a fucking reptilian uh, sniper. ...that we don't have. So we're, ze we're narrowed a fair bit by what it is that we're able to perceive. Um, and we're actually narrowed in what we can perceive far more than anybody ever guessed. So I'm going to show you a little video here. The monkey business illusion. Okay, I just want to tell you this is totally right. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. I got to speed this up. But the idea here is you're focusing on the ball. <laughs> and so... You just, uh, and for the, if you've never seen this before, if you're seriously going to count these, now this is, the concept here is you're counting these, this ball so hard, this is, um, you're indicated that you're looking at on the screen, you're totally focused on that, you don't see um, the structure of the market, or you don't see other things that are changing, and because you can only really, fo I, maybe the idea is you only focus on one thing at a time. The correct answer is 16 passes. See, and I, I wasn't even, I couldn't even, actually, when I first did this experiment, I couldn't count the passes because I really, I'm playing at a little faster speed, but uh, I'm distracted just by people moving. <laughs> did you spot the gorilla? For people who haven't seen or heard about a video like this before, about half missed the gorilla. If you knew about the gorilla, you probably saw it. But did you notice the curtain changing color or the player on the black team leaving the game? See, I, I never, never noticed that. In fact, I watched this five times and I still can't notice that. Because the name of the thing is the gorilla experiment. So I definitely was primed to look for the gorilla, but I, I really don't see the, the what he was talking about. Now, I guess I'd have to go pay attention now on this one. Let's rewind and watch it again. Yeah, I didn't see that person gorilla. leave. And there goes a player, and the curtain okay, is only because, from red to gold. Yeah, they came in when that guy was going out. So, I mean, right? I mean, it was kind of like, you know, it wasn't like they just stepped off the set. They literally, one guy came in, so actually the same amount of people existed. But I didn't catch, unless you pointed out to me, I did not when catch. looking for a gorilla, you often miss other unexpected events. I did not see the curtains change on that one. <laughs> Whatever he said. And that's the monkey business illusion. Learn more about this illusion and the original gorilla experiment at theinvisiblegorilla.com. Okay. So how many of you saw the gorilla? Oh, no, let's, let's do the other See the gorilla. Okay. How many of you had no, known about this video beforehand? Yeah, the gorilla part of it. Yeah, so you guys don't count. Now and then, you know, I get someone who's seen it before and they still miss the damn gorilla, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> so, but, but of course, Simon, Dan Simon set this up because his original video got so popular, you know, virally popular, that everybody has seen the invisible gorilla. And so, you know, now he's showing you that while well, you think you're smart, you've been clued into how blind you are, and it turns out you're not any smarter than you were to begin with, right? So how many people saw all three things that changed? I saw the video before, though. Oh, you've seen it before. So, okay, and how many didn't? Yeah, okay, so the vast majority of you missed one or more of the things that changed. You know, and they're not really trivial things, like the disappearance of a person from six people, that's fairly major, and, you know, the whole background changed color, and you might think you'd clue into that, and so, so the weird thing is, even when you're primed to notice what you're supposed to notice, which is to say, count the balls, and you know that something weird is going to happen, you're not, that still doesn't prime you enough so that you can keep track of all the weird things that are happening. And, like, this was an absolutely staggering experiment when, when it was first shown. People, the psychologists were just like knocked over by it because the hypothesis up to that point had been always that, you know, you could concentrate on what you were concentrating on, but if something anomalous or unexpected happened, your attention would be automatically devoted towards it. And of course, that's what people would think, right? You'd think that if you're watching people play basketball and a gorilla walks into the, you know, area and it's not small, that of course you'd be surprised and you'd see it. And it turns out that that's just wrong. And, you know, it, it tells you a lot about how your nervous system is set up. So you're focusing on counting the balls. And so... I think this is where if you're really stubborn like me, you're just like, I don't give a fuck about that. I'm just going to stick in this trade. Um, 
So I think that's the benefit. If I mean, that's actually a, a good thing. If you could just stick to your guns on your trade, you'd be stubborn and win the trade, which is what that guy was talking about, is that I know where the market's going. I don't want to get stopped out. A little fear of missing out exists for a reason, of course. But it doesn't mean you can't scalp around that position. So for some reason, getting the correct answer to the question, how many times are the, is the ball thrown back and forth, turns out to be motivationally significant. Why? Like, wh why, why did you, you know, you got the instructions, fair enough, but why did you listen to them? Does it matter your attention to the target? Oh, sure it does, but the question is, why did you even comply with the instructions? Yeah, who said that? Because you want to get the answer right. Why did you care if you got the answer right? You want to be right about the market. You want to predict. You, yeah, you want you want to comply and you want to fit. You want a good. You you want to get right. You want to win. Well, think about it for a minute. Like, guess. That means you're smart. Means you're smart. Yeah, that's right. So that's one possibility. It's like instantly you sort of interpret it as a little cognitive test, maybe, and then you want to see if you can do it. And you know, so that taps into your hierarchy of values. Part of your value is I want to be maybe a smart and competent person, or I want to be at least as smart and competent as everyone else is playing this game. And so, you know, the instruction taps into a pre-existent value structure and then it's motivating. Okay, so, yeah. Compliance? What, compliance as well. Yes, that's another thing. It's like, the, you know, the room in some ways is set up to ensure a degree of compliance, right? Because there's an, there's an implicit story in the room, which is if I'm at the front of it, and so that sort of makes me at the top of the dominance hierarchy, and the fact that you're here means you've already bought into that presupposition, and so it's a logical thing to do to play along with the game. So, yes. True, that, that's more like the playing a game issue, right? Is that, well, maybe something interesting will happen. Okay, right, right, right. Okay, so there's a variety of reasons why you might listen to the instructions. But the point is the instructions actually tap into your motivation, in your intrinsic motivation enough, so that you will, in fact, attempt to play the game. And then as soon as you play the game, what happens? Well, you focus your very limited attentional resources precisely on what it is that you're supposed to do. Now, we could talk a little bit about how the visual field is set up. So, you know, you, you notice that... So you want to get this Gartley pattern. You want to get this Fibonacci number. So instead of 16, let's think that you did the 618, right? 6.18 retracement. You're so focused on that. You don't see the gorilla coming into your trade. You don't see the. You don't see that. Uh, you just got stopped out of. You don't see that your t stop doesn't make sense for this trade. So to me, it's all. It's all wrapped. Up. To me, it's just totally. Um, sounds to me like he's talking about trading. Like, if I'm looking around the room, if I want to see you, all of you, I can't just stand here and look straight ahead. Because all you people over here, you're like, I can't see, if I'm looking straight ahead, I, I can't see the faces of anyone past here. And I can only see them sort of as blurs. So you're looking at one chart at a time. You're looking at one chart at a time. And unless they move. And if they move up something, then I can see the movement, but I can't. I actually see out of the corner of my eye, my, my tequila buddy, we used to joke, I said, out of the corner of my goes to go, out of the corner of your eye, I go, yeah, I got a tick chart up on the left here. I just saw the market just slam down. Peripheral, I can, I can just, oh, you know what? They just took it down. They just took it down. It's not clear to me what's moving, and it's the same for the people over here. Yeah, I, unless I know I got that chart up there, and I, I know that's, the market just tanked on the left side, and I'm in this, it's, it's, uh, if I'm, uh, if I'm long or short, I'm like, okay, here, I'm, I'm up right now. And it, like, like Mark Douglas says, do I get out here? Do I add? Do I cash out, wait? And if I'm not afraid of missing out, I realize I can step in and out of the market with an effortless that nobody can believe. Here, the only person I can really see right now is the, is the woman who's sitting there in the white sweater. All the rest of you are like, and the, and the person to the right, I can more or less, as long as I look at her, I can more or less see that he's dressed in gray. But yeah, because I, I don't have the chart zoomed out too much, chart zoomed in too big. I'm looking at the one minute. Oof, I can't see the monthlies. They just fucking blew up my account. I can't see his face at all. Now he nodded his head, and I can pick that up. So what's very strange about your visual system, and your sensory systems are like this in, in, in uh, you know, all your sensory systems are like this, is that you have a tiny little point of focus where... The so you have to realize just how you are just... Um, it's hard to hold in context. If you're staring at the one-minute chart, you have to hold mental context of where you're at in the landscape of the one-hour chart. So if you have the one-hour chart up and you see the one-minute chart, you're like, okay, I see. I see 
it's hard to hold those both in context if you have a trade plan for the one-minute chart, but you don't have a trade plan for the one-hour chart because the stops are too tight that you're using on the one-minute chart. So if you're sniping, how can you be a sniper and a swing trader? Well, I think the swing trading, you don't have to look at the chart. Only you know, every four hours you could look at that chart, or every two hours you could look at the swing trading chart and update your trade. And then you can do one of these um, ICT goober trades where you have a wide stop and you you know trail it and scale out. He doesn't scale in, which I don't understand either. He's like, scale out of your trade. Okay, duh. How about scaling in, bro? <laughs> it's a two-way street. It's a revolving door of trades. The information is rich, and that's partly because, so the center of your eye is the fovea, and it's most densely uh, it's most densely packed with cells, but more importantly, each of the cells in your fovea, which is the very center of your vision, you can tell when someone's pointing their fovea, fovea at you, because then you, you, know, you have the sense that they're looking at you, and human beings are unbelievably good at figuring out when someone is pointing their fovea at you. Uh, we, we, can, we can detect eye, um, what would you call it, deviation from direct gaze with an accuracy that's absolutely remarkable. Now, he that is scary. I noticed that. Um... So I got a friend that has an eyeball that doesn't queue up, right? I never know which look I'd look into because I don't want to um, seem impolite where I'm looking at his bad eye, his stray eyeball, because he's going to know right then. But he probably gets that from everybody. In other words, he's used to that distortion. But it is funny that that is so true that if somebody's staring right through you, now this is the thousand-yard stare that was uh, mentioned by uh, this um, guy named Mark Scott, this Marine, because of the thousand-yard stare. They're looking right through you. The same thing in martial arts. When you punch somebody, you're punching through them. You're not punching them. You're punching beyond them. So just like when you hit a golf ball. The way the club follow through is you don't just hit the ball and stop hitting. You have to get the follow through. So you're literally this, it's almost like putting English, <laughs> the people in the bowling alley, I joke that they lean in after they let, let go of the ball, they're leaning like it's going to help their fucking, maybe it does. Very nanolistic. It <laughs> helps the fucking trajectory when they lean after they release the bowling ball. Each of those little cells in the fovea is connected, each of the one cells is connected to like 20,000 cells at the first level of the hierarchy of the visual system. And so the reason... Now that's pretty fucking insane, isn't it? Talk about a goddamn data feed. And that your whole eye isn't fovea because your head would have to be this big to manage it. So, you know, what's evolved is sort of a compromise, is that in the center of your vision, it's, the center of your vision is very, very detailed. And, and then what you do is you zip that center around like snap, 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 snap. And your brain sort of makes a, a amalgamated picture out of all those little snapshots. And, you know, then it weaves it together so it seems to you like it's a continuous, what, a continuous movie of consciousness, even though it's really not. And then the sides of your eyes, the periphery... Not to mention that you're actually... Everything you, your brain receives is upside down. You just adapted it because your lens doesn't have a corrective thing to... Um, there's not another lens to counteract the... Uh, the flip. So you're actually, everything's upside down. But your brain is adjusted everything to be um, normal. Three of your eyes, well, they don't have the same potency as the fovea. And so they, they kind of play a triage game. It's like, okay, I can't see, if I'm looking straight ahead, I can't see everything. What might I use as an indication that I should move my gaze from where I'm looking to somewhere else? And one answer to that is movement. So the periphery is pretty good at picking up movement. And so often, if you see movement in the periphery, then you'll move your foveal vision to where the movement was, and then, you know, then you can keep track of what's changing. So what your brain sort of assumes is that when you're looking at something, everything else is irrelevant, and it's also, it also sort of fades into the background. And so that's what's happening with the gorilla video. And so the, part of the reason you can't see the damn gorilla is because he's dressed in black like the players. And so when you're focusing on the basketball, all the black moving things look the same. You know, there's no distinction between them at all. And then the background of the curtain, it's like, well, first of all, why would you be primed to see the curtain change color? Like, things just don't do that in real life, right? I mean, big... So you're not primed to see volatility because you have direction in your mind. You have a target. You're not, you're not primed to notice, you know, the market's just not been going anywhere for like an hour and a half. And... It can't trade sideways forever. So something's got to give. Something's going to happen. 
But you're not thinking that. You're thinking, man, look at my target. We're almost there. Then blue, then smash all the right. Market's going against you. Hard out of a small, quiet zone for some reason. And I think it's just, honestly, there's pressure built up on both sides of a narrow range. And nature doesn't like a vacuum, so we got to go fill it. Objects don't suddenly change color, very, very seldomly. So, and, but, and more importantly, the fact that the gorilla shows up, the fact that one player leaves, and the fact that the curtains change color has no bearing whatsoever on whether or not you can complete the task, right? So it doesn't matter if you ignore the information, and that's because it's irrelevant in terms of the interpretive frame, the motivated interpretive frame that you're applying to the scene. And so the rule for perception is don't pay attention to anything that isn't directly relevant to the desired outcome. Now, exactly how you calculate... So don't pay attention to somebody's swing trade when you're in a fucking scalp. What you can pay attention to and what you can't, that's very complicated. It's, I mean, you build that knowledge bit by bit over time. And, and, and so you really have to train yourself. That's the discipline, I would say. Train yourself not to go to the... I can scalp off the four-hour chart if I'm right at the edge of the wicks. I can see, hey, you know what? The rear right is support on the wick. Now, on the one-minute chart, you might say it's a triple bottom on the one-minute chart, and all that comes together, and you're like, okay. But you could actually be on the four. There's people that could be on the on the one-hour chart and make a bunch of money. And they know what the, without even looking, well, after a while, once you look at the one-hour chart and see the way it's behaving, you can just imagine in your mind what the one-minute chart looks like. It's probably got some fucking tops. Anytime the market wiggles, you know there's a doji or a top and becoming a bottom, or there's a bottom becoming a bottom and a top becoming a top there's there's it's range trading because it's dead in the water at the bottom of a session so it goes sideways on the one hour yeah you can go to the five minute but you kind of after a while you're like i know what the five minute trade look chart looks like it looks like bullshit it looks like noise because the market hasn't moved anywhere but you're at the bottom of a four hour bar are you going to tip into the void are you going to is this just another fucking stupid four hour range trade where the market goes up and down up and down for four hours I mean, I mean, up and down and up and down for 28 hours. And there's fucking, uh, how many bars that adds up to? I don't know. Say so there's um, eight four-hour bars, so eight times four, whatever that number is. And it's just, but if you have a trade plan for that kind of movement and that's your focus, then you're making money. You don't have to have a, a final destination. That doesn't be a big target for you. And you can be wrong about it, too. But... Um so, so the old idea was, you know, well, you first of all, that you were very much conscious of the environment, period, which you're not. And then the second idea was, well, while you're being conscious of the environment, if anything changes radically, you will definitely focus your attention on it. And then, and what turned out to be the case is, well, you're not very conscious of the environment, and radical things can happen, and you won't notice them unless they interfere with what you're doing. So something that emerges that interferes. Yeah, when Bitcoin went up, I didn't even know Bitcoin was trading that high, but I just opened the chart one day and I'm like, holy shit. And then, of course, you're thinking, God, if I would have owned Bitcoin, now you start to, the greed program kicks in and you start to fantasize about what if you bought Bitcoin at X, but realizing that you would have wished you would have bought more, the, the, the next thing that's going to happen to anybody that says that is going to say, yeah, but how much would I have bought down there? I would have wanted to buy everything invested in Bitcoin. For that trade. Now, had you bought a small amount, you're still pissed off. I should have bought more. The greed factor. So you you analyze the market with the greed mindset. I get that, but when the market's open, you can't be in greed mode or fear mode because that's ninety percent of traders are in. That's why they're getting killed. Fear and greed. You're having fun mode. Fear and greed on the weekend. You built your fear and greed trade plans. That's all in the can. That's you're good to go. You're on now. You're on muscle memory. When the market opens, you're on muscle memory. You've rehearsed your kata. So people say, "Why are you doing a kata?" A kata is like a a, a, mo a sequence of movements in a martial arts, kind of like playing scales on guitar. Well, you do the kata so that you put it. You embed that in your muscle memory, and all somebody attacks you. You're doing a segment of the kata, and you don't know it, and you, and you just killed the guy. You just defended yourself in reflexive manner. So the kata is the trade plan. Here's what, with what you're doing that you don't expect you will inst instantly orient towards and concentrate on. So it isn't 
anomaly or novelty that attracts your attention. It's the unexpected disruption of the relationship between your behaviors and the desired outcome of those behaviors. And that's a much narrower claim. Only pay attention to things that make you fail. It's something like that. Or at least additionally pay attention to things that make you fail. Your stuff. You know, generally speaking, that's also associated with an emotional response, you know. So if you're doing something and, and you know you think you know how to do it, and so you're doing it, and then all of a sudden something unexpected happens, you're going to have an emotional reaction. And we'll talk more about the emotional reactions in the next class, but the emotional reaction partly prepares you for the worst in case this unexpected thing is bigger than you think it is, and sort of also primes you to be curious and to start to explore it to figure out what it is, so that you can reconstruct your expectations and desires in accordance with the transforming world. So this slide is an elaboration in some sense of what I was telling you a little bit earlier about the multiple levels of reality, you know, so the idea is that the thing that you see, which in this particular schema would be the computer, is nested inside all of these systems or has other systems nested inside of it. And that's part of an indication of the complexity of things. Now, you know, one of the things that you might think about, for example, if you're using your computer, one of the things you might ask yourself is like, why is your computer a black rectangle or a, like a silver rectangle? It's all smooth and shiny. Why is that? You know, like, it's not clear first, it's not transparent, okay, and, and then it's got this smooth cover and it, it wouldn't necessarily have to. Why, why do you think that's appealing to you? Because it's familiar to like a book. Okay, so it's familiar, yeah, and it, it, that, that's good, so it's familiar. What, what else is, it's simple. Yeah, you don't wanna, you don't wanna in, interact with the computer at all. You wanna interact with little pictures on the screen. And then you don't even really want to interact with those. You want to interact with some subset of what that picture is doing on the screen. And so you're very, very rarely using the computer, right? You're just paying attention to, well, let's say the screen and the key. You just have MT4 loaded, that's all. <laughs> you just, MT4 is my life. Keyboard. So the computer is whatever's underneath that. And then what, what that is, is a collection of parts that are so bloody complicated that you don't want to have anything to do with them that are nested inside a whole network of things that are so complex you don't want to have anything to do with them. And so, so you know, what happens when you're using a computer is all of a sudden it stops working. Well, then it's a computer. As soon as it stops working, it's a computer. Before that, it was whatever it was you were doing. And as soon as it turns into a computer, what do you do with it? Well, you know, you stupidly hit the on and off button. And maybe you plug it in and, and, you know, and out or something. And maybe you check your switches to make sure that a fuse didn't burn out or a breaker go. And that's pretty much. So I would say that the same thing's true about your trading account. Um, you're in a trade, everything's going well, you get stopped out. Now it's just in a trade now it's just a trading account. Now it's just equity. It's it's not working. You're not making any money now. You know, you just now it's just a trading account. It's not it's not um, an opportunity and it's not your money's not growing now. It's dead. You know, you're not now it's just a trading account. The end of you in terms of your ability to deal with the actual entity. The end of you and the way you're going to build your account and make uh, your dreams come true, right? And then you curse with your primate brain and then you send it out to be fixed. And so yeah, so now you get pissed off then you go look for a better trade plan, a better... Um, I just talked to this trader on Friday that was telling me that um, she has this trading system and she had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And I think that's the funniest shit I've ever heard. Like... If your trading system's that good, like, what do you care? I mean, there's no such thing. <laughs> That's holy grail fucking thinking. Non-disclosure agreement. You don't understand, man. This guy's trading system, you should see his results. Can anybody see how ridiculous that is? That thought? Non-disclosure agreement. Do it if I tell you, I gotta kill you. So, one of the things that's that's, that's worth considering, because this will also help us understand what happens in terms of brain function as we go along, is that as long as things are going according to how you want them to go, you can really pretend that the world is unbelievably simple. All oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a great trader, and it's just like, wow, this is beautiful. It's wonderful. All the world consists of is those few things that you're doing in your little bounded perceptual frame. That's my favorite life. When I have a trade plan that's running on the half-hour chart, I'm like... This is paradise. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about the, the thing down the, the, the politics and fuck all that. I'm just a trader. Leave me alone. And everything else is zero. 
And then, unfortunately, yeah, that's why I had to get rid of the wife. Uh, honey, you know what? Why are we breaking up? Uh, because I'm dating MT4. Now and then, the hypothesis that everything else is zero is radically wrong, like when your computer crashes. And then you actually, actually, for a while, have to deal with at least some of the complexity that's actually there. And that's usually extremely anxiety provoking. So, you know, you can imagine the same situation is while well, you're in your nice smooth car and you're on the highway and all of a sudden, you know, you hear a horrible grinding noise and smoke comes out of the back and you're, you're off pulled over to the side. Well, what was merely a means of getting from point A to B in comfort, like two seconds ago, is now a collection of extremely troublesome parts, none of which you know anything about. As Mark, as, as Mark Douglas would say, you go from euphoria to pure fucking hell because you're just, you're totally getting killed in a trade. Plus it's disrupted your day, plus it's disrupted your pocketbook, plus you have to now deal with yeah, the pocketbook. Don't remind me. It's a bunch of people who are going to tell you what's wrong with your vehicle and maybe fix it for some... Yeah, what you got to do here is you see I need a Fibonacci tool. Oh, you didn't use the Fibonacci. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at this guy. No Fibonacci. Ha, no, what do you blow up your account? Completely unknown amount of money and with dubious utility. And so, poof, the car turns into that. And so it's... It's almost impossible to overestimate the degree to which we live within a world that's bounded by our expectations and desires and how much time we spend keeping everything that's complex away from us so that we don't have to deal with it. Okay, so now we might want to think about how we do that. I'm going to show you, this is a little schema that might be helpful, so, like, I gonna, made this little diagram. He's going to go into fractals here. This is the... Um if you think of uh, the, the, the five minute chart inside the uh, one hour chart, so the fractals, so the setups that you see that are kind of untradeable if the spread's too wide on the one minute chart, he's going to take you through this fractal stuff. I'm of dots because I wanted to make an ambiguous figure. So I'm hoping that when you look at that figure, what do you see? I think that's what he's going to do, <laughs> if I remember this properly. When you look at it. The center. What, what, what shape is the center? A cross. Okay, so you can see a cross. What else can you see? It's a rectangle. Yeah, what else can you see? It's four squares. Yeah, exactly. So and what else can you see? That's a good one. I haven't seen that one. I'll take your word for it, though. What else can you see? I'll show you some of the things you can see, okay? You see that, right? See that? See that? You can see that? You can see that? Okay, so... So imagine this is the line chart, the candlestick chart. I mean, this is the Ranko chart, the um, tick chart, where you have uh, 20 ticks make a bar. The first thing that you might note is that the thing in the beginning, the thing in itself, let's say, you can see multiple ways. It's not exactly that you have an opinion about what it is, you know, it's that you can actually see those different things. You can see it manifesting those different perceptual objects. And that, that's a strange thing because, it, you know, how people always think that arguments are about opinions. There's some facts and you have one set of opinions about them and you have another and then you argue about the opinions till you get to the facts. Unfortunately, it's a lot worse than that because the facts themselves are often reasonably subject to debate. So. So, but the market data that comes in and all that, so you can see where that's, where I'm going with that. I'll just, people want to know, I'll put the link to this video on the series. This guy talking about personality types and everything. You can listen to it forever and know your personality types. So know, know your, uh, oh God, they got this thing, the fucking, if you fill out one of these uh, things to open a Forex account, you see stuff like know your client. So it's kind of like the, uh, I have these things where I've opened up Forex accounts and they ask me shit like, have you ever traded gold? Yeah. How many years? And I was like 10 years. I always like to put on there more than 10 years, more than you know, bitch, older than you. Shut the fuck up. Stop asking me questions. Anyways, I'm going to put, I'm going to post this thing. So, uh, yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And everybody um, has an opinion. That's mine. <laughs> I hope his audio is uh, is as loud as mine. It's hard to get the mix here right, so he might be louder than me. 
quieter than me. I'm I'm running. I usually on YouTube. I play back. Uh, I run in compression mode because. Um, oh, it looks like the audio auto adjusted on me. I didn't catch that. Um, there's something in the software kind of fucking this thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what I. That, that was my anger um, management uh, tour today. So we're gonna go back to the uh, the d drudgery of writing uh, risk plans this weekend. Let's have to go back and do the boring uh, risk management. With the other guy was not like I said, the guy from uh, Spread Button UK. He doesn't seem to have a, much of a risk plan, but um, that's that's what I'm working on myself is the risk ish issues as opposed to the um, looking at the patterns. Patterns are useless without a trade plan and a risk management plan. So that's it. That's my two cents.